a gorgeous day like today, when I go to the range, I like to take some refreshments with me. So today, I've got a picnic in my rucksack. What have we got? Whoa. I've got some American wine, high class Californian, really good quality. Keeps your weight up. Next. <gasps> What's this? Cucumber sandwiches. Of course, with the crusts cut off, these are excellent. The Americans developed the hamburger, we developed the cucumber sandwich. <gasps> this makes everyone happy when they come out. A tin of Pringles. <gasps> no picnic is complete without some cake. You gotta have a bit of cake, nice bit of cake. <gasps> Chockies. Look at those, you gotta have a box of chockies. We can use them a little bit later. A nice pot of tea. You've got to have a nice cup and saucer. I've got my magical picnic. I've got my range. Now all I need is a gun. And I got one of those in here too. And it is the FX Dreamline Tactical Compact. Ta-da! Hello there. Welcome to the Airgun Gear Show. It has been a long time. In this episode, I've got the FX Dreamline Tactical Compact. FX Dream Tac Compact is the other short version name for it, because it is quite a short gun. And this is the sub 12 foot pound 177 version. And it's the Picnic Bag Pocket Rocket Air Gun. Let me just correct myself, just for the trolls and the YouTube police. I wouldn't take this to a family picnic. Not a good idea. You're going to get yourself all sorts of the wrong attention if you do. Everybody panic! Oh my God! Got to do the legal bit. This video is brought to you today by airgun101.com. It's actually my company. It is a platform which has the best videos for air guns, hunting reviews from the best creators around the world. The stuff on there before it actually hits YouTube. So please go take a look. Also on there, you've got all the links to all the things that you might want, including a link to my little shop, which is airgun101shop.co.uk. It's got some good accessories and gadgets on there. Go take a look. First thing to note is that that 350 super short barrel really does bark. Now, if you want to use this in your back garden, I would strongly suggest putting a moderator on. If you're at a range or at a club or something like that, it's absolutely fine. But if you want to be backyard friendly, I would put a moderator on. And it's really easy to do because it's threaded at the front. You just unscrew the cap, screw the moderator on, and you're good to go. The Dreamline rifle is based always on the central core of the system and it's this block here. So whichever Dreamline rifle you buy, you always get this block in the middle with the trigger, with the side lever action. But depending on which model you go for depends which options you've got bolted onto it. So for example, on this one, you've got a 170cc cylinder, but if you want to change that to a carbon cylinder, you can, you just unscrew it and screw a carbon cylinder on. You can change the stock at the back. You just unscrew it and screw something different on. So the whole point of the Dreamline system is that everything is modular, but the block in the middle always stays the same. So what do you get in this current setup? Sub 12 foot pound 177. Well, let's start with the barrel. The barrel is a superior liner. And let me tell you, it is superior over some of the earlier 177 barrels that FX have put out before. It really does shoot lights out. This sleeve over the top doesn't really offer any sort of shrouding. It just doesn't, which is why I would suggest putting a moderator on. And let me tell you that the shortness of that barrel does not decrease the accuracy of the rifle. Overall length of the rifle, minus the big hugget on the end, is 82 centimeters. 
If you're going for an FAC one in the UK, you might have a couple more inches added on to the end of that barrel. Rest of the world, who knows? I ain't got a clue. I haven't got one of them. Cylinder is 170 cc's of air. And if you don't like that cylinder, it's quite easy. You can just swap it out, as I say, with a carbon bottle. Working back, we've got a couple of gauges. You've got regulator gauge and cylinder pressure. The regulator is fully adjustable. If you're in the right country, if you're sub 12, probably not. But you can adjust that regulator to give you a bit more power. Coming back down here, you've got a Picatinny rail, which is fixed, and I've got a nice Coldwell bipod on there. Working the way back, standard as with any Dreamline, is you've got this smooth as silk side lever loading action just there. Safety switch, and then of course you've got the fully adjustable trigger, which is bladed at the bottom. I would say that that trigger is 99.9% .9 match grade. Uh, I think it's really good. Most of us aren't going to notice a lot of difference, but you can fully adjust it to however you want it. On top, you've got a Picatinny rail, you've got a rubberized grip at the bottom, grips are interchangeable, and then coming at the back, you've got the folding stock. Now the folding stock comes, the actual bracket comes with the gun. The stock does not. The stock is mil spec, so that's like AR style, so you need to buy that as an optional extra. I don't know why FX don't actually put a mil spec stock on it. I'm not really too sure, but they don't, and that's the way it is. But it does give you the chance to max it out for all sorts of accessories at the back. On the left-hand side, you have got a transfer port adjuster, so you can go from 177, 25, 30, and low if you want. And at the rear as well, you've got an adjustable hammer spring. Never adjust that or dial that when you've got the gun cocked. It's not a good idea. And the other thing as well is that you can also get at that hammer spring adjustment if you want to make some fine tuning to the rifle. And to top it all off, it's got a 22 shot rotary magazine. Depending on which caliber, you may get 18 or something like that, but this is 22 and it loads nice and easily. That's it, that's the gun, that's what you've got. Rather good looking. The trigger is factory set, and for me, it's just fantastic. There's a little bit of creep before you let that shot go, but it's set up really nicely from the factory. And like I said, I've made no alterations to it whatsoever. And that side lever loading, well, that is silky smooth every time. And it really does help you to hit the target quickly and accurately. And there is something which I've noticed as well is the FX have put in a little magnet so that when you do bring that lever back and then you put it forward again, it sort of grabs. There we go. So you don't have to push in those last few millimeters. Now I'm going to talk about accuracy because there's a few people out there that are going to get upset with that barrel length and they're going to say, that little gun, that little gun's never going to be able to outshoot my big long barrel rifle. Well, actually, I'm going to disagree with you there because that little group there of five shots at 25 yards, it's about seven mil in width. And I've measured it with my wonky ruler. It's about seven mil in width. And a 177 pallet is 4.5 mils wide. So... I would say for a sub 12, that's a rather tidy group. I really hope the camera got that one. And that group there, that's my 50 yard group. And there's five shots in there and they sit under a 5p coin, which is about 1.5 centimeters wide. So I've got that and I've got that. And I've got the footage to prove it, which is really rather quite exciting. Prepare yourself for a rant, YouTube. And this is actually to try and help people that are making decisions about what they're looking to get. Always look for scope cam footage. Now, I see far too much nowadays photos on Facebook of thumbhole size groups at 150 yards, and it's just one picture. Listen, before you make that big decision, look around at the reviewers and have a look for scope cam footage you really want to see that rifle doing what it actually is supposed to be doing that's why i spend so much time showing you my scope cam footage
Oh, look at that one. In all the excitement, I nearly forgot to tell you what ammo I'm using. I'm using the FX Airguns 177 pellets. Nothing special, nothing amazing. I've done all the pellet testing for you to save you a lot of time, and there's actually no slugs in this bit. It's a 177 4.52 FX Airguns pellet, and it's that simple. There's one. Two. Missed it. <laughs> Missed it. Yeah, that's it. Correct for windage. Nearly there. Yeah, that's it. You get there kind of in the end. It's a 177 at 100 yards, sub 12 foot bound. You gotta give it a little bit of windage. Having a quick look at my chronograph numbers, I can see that I'm averaging around 10.9 to 11, 11.1 foot pounds with the Dreamtac Compact. And that rifle is set from the factory, so I haven't made any changes to it. That's exactly as it comes. Remember, you can always tweak that hammer spring a little bit if you want it to go up or down. And I reckon out of that 170cc cylinder, I'm going to get about 120 shots, which is pretty good. Now, what about the rest of that picnic? In years gone by, you might have noticed that I've expanded more and more as I've got older. Now, I'd like to tell you that that's a medical condition and that my medication is wrong if I was on any medication, but that's not true. The reason that I am the size that I am is because I eat the wrong sort of food. Get in my belly! And that's because I eat a lot of chocolate and a lot of pizza. Cookies! Cookies! That's why I'm fat. Now, there are a lot of YouTubers out there that when they make a video, they like to eat whatever they've shot. And seeing as I've got a box of chocolates in my picnic bag, it would be a shame to not follow that tradition, wouldn't it? You've got to pick your target. Have a think about what it is you want to shoot. Because some of them are right and some of them are wrong. I mean, the strawberry cream one, that's good. But then you get the ones that have got coconut in and that's just wrong. So I think probably we'll go with lots of strawberry creams and lots of orange creams, not toffees. <laughs> I ain't got any teeth left as it is. Um, and then we've got like chalk blocks and stuff like that. And then of course there's the purple one, which is caramel with a nut in. Let's, let's put some of them out and see how we do. Let's maybe do, let's do five. There we are. See how we... <laughs> There's one. Two, three. Oh, how can I miss that? Wind. Four. Oh, we even peeled the wrapper on that one. Five. And because I've got some shots left. I just want to mention the scope that's on top there. It's an Element Optics Nexus. Now, the scope costs more than the rifle. And you might say, well, you're a little bit mad for doing that. Well, no, because I mean, the rifle is capable of a lot and you need a quality piece of glass on top. The interesting thing is, is that with those no limit mounts on top as well, I can actually dial, you know, I've got the markers set on my scope. I can dial from 25 to 50 to 100 all off the top turret and the scope is able to do that quite easily and that's with a sub 12 foot pound rifle so i guess what i'm saying is is that if you're going to get a quality rifle don't put a load of junk on the top i'm not saying nexus is the right thing to go for even though it is fab but don't put a bit of junk on the top because if you do you probably won't be able to replicate my results oh. 
Look at that. Look at that. You can see straight through it. That's choptastic. I, w I wonder what that tastes like. There's a bit of lead in there. Oh dear. Uh, well, there's, a, there's certainly a chocolate wound cavity there. That's not bad. Oh, full chocky. Oh, look at that one. It actually split it right down the middle. Look at all that goodness. I strongly suggest that you don't do this at home, just in case. It's rather nutty. It's a bit sloppy. Oh dear. Well, we really should put that out of its misery, just in case. I, just for science, I'm doing this for you, remember? Good orange cream. Always a good thing that when you go hunting, it's always a good thing if you're doing it for food which is quite true. So what are my final thoughts on the FX Dream Tac Compact? Well, first of all, for me, it's the looks. I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks better than Beyonce in a latex catsuit. It is incredibly good looking. There are some trolls out there that will say, it's just the FX. Well, yeah, I guess you're probably right but then again the problem is is that FX just keeps bringing this stuff out and if they keep bringing it out people are going to keep showing it to you it looks good shoots incredibly well and it's just an all-round superb package and you won't be disappointed if you get your hands on one just a quick message for those trolls as well it's the 18th of September 2020 the rule of six has come into the UK so I thought I'd film you a very special goodbye and give you something to type about and get upset. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.